make no mistake, whereas once there were only a handful of us in the alternative health community promoting the value of probiotic supplements, they have now gone mainstream, with even hospitals and medical doctors promoting their use. But inevitably, whenever any alternative health supplement gains that big a spotlight, myths of all kinds, some to take it down and some to exploit it, gain traction as an inevitable result. In this video, we're going to look at three such myths, two takedowns from the medical community and one exploitation from within the alternative health community. Incidentally, we know these myths have gained traction based on the number of questions concerning them we've received at the Foundation. So let's begin. Myth number one, probiotics are useless. In 2016, Genome Medicine published a study that claimed there was no evidence that supplemental probiotics changed the composition of fecal bacteria in healthy adults. Ipso facto, supplementing with probiotics was a useless exercise. Not surprisingly, the mainstream media was all over it declaring probiotic supplements a waste of money. So what's the story? Does the Genome Medicine study put the nail in the coffin for probiotic supplements? Or is it the usual nonsense? Well, judge for yourself. First, we're not talking about a clinical study, but rather a review of seven earlier randomized control trials that recorded, along with other information, data as to what changes took place in the composition of beneficial bacteria in the participants' colons. Based on that analysis, the researchers concluded, according to our systematic review, no convincing evidence exists for consistent effects of examined probiotics on fecal microbiota composition in healthy adults, despite probiotic products being consumed to a large extent by the general population. Ouch! Let's not bury probiotics too quickly. There are a number of issues with the study, primarily relating to the fact that most strains of beneficial bacteria live in the small intestine, not the colon. With that in mind, the results of the seven RCTs were hardly as negative as this study implies once you actually look at the individual RCTs. For example, one trial found that probiotics were effective in redressing the age-related increase of opportunistic pathogens, such as Clostridium difficile, Enterococcus facium, and Campylobacter. And a second trial found that supplementation with LKCI increased its presence in the small intestine 14-fold and LKCI is one of the best documented and most studied probiotics that can aid in overall digestion and in immune system health. But the clearest evidence came from a third trial that at first glance appears to agree with the meta-study that supplementation with l did not modify the composition of the intestinal ecosystem in healthy adults. However, to consider rhamnosis supplementation as a failure, you would have to ignore the rest of the sentence in the RCT's conclusion which says, indicating that probiotics confer their health effects by other mechanisms. This is important because studies have shown that L. rhamnosus doesn't live in the colon, so you won't find it by looking at fecal matter. It lives in the small intestine. And supplementation with L. rhamnosus helps everything from improving fat metabolism to relieving IBS and from ameliorating candida to improving intestinal permeability and modulating the inflammatory response in the spleen and colon. Not bad for something that's supposedly a complete waste of money. Key point here is that beneficial bacteria colonies can be found all along the intestinal tract from mouth to anus. In your mouth alone, it is estimated that there are over 100 million bacteria in every milliliter of saliva from more than 600 different species. Restricting your study to fecal matter won't tell you anything about most of them. Another major problem with the study concerns its conclusions that probiotic supplementation is only useful in cases of full-blown dysbiosis. But the truth is that most people supplement with probiotics not to treat dysbiosis, but to prevent it. Like tomming off your gas tank before heading out on a trip rather than waiting until you run out of gas on the road. Or to put it another way, you supplement regularly so that you will never need a large change in your gut flora. And why is it necessary? Well, off the top of my head, over time, the colonies of friendly bacteria just naturally age and lose their vitality. Many drugs, including non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are destructive to intestinal flora. Chlorine in the drinking water kills beneficial bacteria. Cigarettes, alcohol, and stress are also major culprits. And antibiotics, both medicinal and in our food supply, are the number one culprit in the overgrowth of harmful pathogens in the gastrointestinal tract. In other words, there are many reasons for wanting to continually top off the tank. Which brings us to myth two. Probiotics will kill you. 
Now our second study is actually a series of studies about the relationship between blood levels of TMAO, that's trimethylamine and oxide, and bacteria levels in the gut. The studies concluded that the higher the level of bacteria in the gut, the higher the levels of TMAO in the bloodstream, and the higher the levels of TMAO in the bloodstream, the higher the level of cardiovascular disease, and the greater the risk of death from kidney disease. Now, the key here is how they determined that gut bacteria cause higher levels of TMAO. Quite simply, they tested TMAO levels in mice, then administered a course of antibiotics to kill their gut bacteria. The net result was reduced levels of TMAO, and thus lower levels of disease and death. And boy, did the press have a field day with those results, with headlines such as, cardiologists say throw out your probiotics, they're killing you. Unfortunately, there's a problem with this approach in that antibiotics kill all bacteria in the gut, both good and bad. So, although killing all gut bacteria lowers TMAO levels, when you look at gut bacteria one at a time, you get a completely different result. For example, a 2014 study published in Symbiosis found that supplementation with lactobacilli bacteria actually helps prevent cardiovascular disease. Just the opposite result, if you will. So, what are lactobacilli? In fact, they're all the bacteria that have an L in front of their names, including L. acidophilus, L. salivarius, L. plantarium, L. rhamnosus. More to the point, a 2016 study published in MBio found that not only lactobacilli, but also bifidobacteria specifically inhibit TMAO production in the body. So, to be clear, and contrary to how the press represented the study, a good supplemental probiotic formula does not increase TMAO levels. On the contrary, it both lowers them and crowds out those bacteria, such as E. coli, that are likely to raise them. The bottom line is that whatever bacteria are causing TMAO levels to rise, it ain't the ones you find in most supplements. The bottom line is that killing all bacteria in the gut is truly throwing out the baby with the bathwater. In other words, although TMAO and some species of bacteria, such as E. coli, may be a problem, Supplementing with beneficial bacteria is anything but. Now, myth number three is that there's a simple test to tell if your probiotics are working. Unlike the previous two, this one comes from within the alternative health community, or at least from some companies within the community selling probiotic supplements. What they've done is add yogurt cultures, mostly L. bulcaricus, to their blend. Then they tell people to compare their supplement to others by trying to make yogurt with the supplements. If it doesn't thicken the milk like theirs does, then it's dead and not working. But this is a totally bogus test. Consider some other foods that are extremely high in probiotics, but do not thicken. Kimchi juice, sour pickles, sauerkraut juice, kombucha, miso, rejuvelac. These are all powerful probiotic foods, and not one of them is yogurt-like. Add any of them to milk, and they're not going to make yogurt. Thickened yogurt is only produced by a small number of probiotic strains, such as Bulgaricus. But other than being misleading, is there any problem with adding yogurt cultures to a supplement so that you can fool customers? And the answer is yes. While it's true that Bulgaricus is beneficial, it's just not as beneficial as some of the other strains usually found in supplements. And there's only so much room in a supplement. The more yogurt cultures you add so that your supplement can make yogurt, the less room you have for more beneficial strains, such as acidophilus, salivarius, and bifidus. It's simple math. Unfortunately, this myth has taken hold in the alternative health community. At the foundation, we've actually been contacted by a number of people who've been told by their naturopath doctors to evaluate their probiotic supplements in this way. Shame on those doctors for being fooled by marketing hype. Really? They're not going to recommend kombucha or rejuvelac because they don't make yogurt? Shame on them for making recommendations without doing their due diligence. But enough of that. Let's begin to wrap things up here. To be sure, many of the so-called probiotic foods and supplements being marketed today aren't worth very much in terms of health. They contain either the wrong cultures or too few live cultures. On the other hand, there can be no true health or recovery from disease unless you have colonies of over a hundred trillion beneficial microorganisms flourishing in your intestinal tract, from your mouth to your anus, aiding in digestion, absorption, the production of significant amounts of vitamins and enzymes, and working to crowd out all harmful bacteria, allowing them no place to gain a foothold. Supplementation with a good probiotic is mandatory to raise your baseline of health and strengthen your immune system. 
benefits of a probiotically optimized intestinal tract include lower cholesterol, inhibition of cancer, protection against food poisoning, protection against stomach ulcers, protection against lactose intolerance and casein intolerance, enhanced immunity, protection against many harmful bacteria, viruses, and fungi, protection against candida overgrowth, prevention and correction of constipation and diarrhea, ileitis and colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, and a whole range of other digestive tract dysfunctions, improvement in the health and appearance of the skin, better nutrition from improved absorption and the internal generation of B vitamins, and protection against vaginosis and yeast infections. A good probiotic formula is absolutely essential for long-term intestinal health and long-term pathogen control. There are many beneficial bacteria that can be contained in a good probiotic, but two are preeminent. To maximize the probiotic benefits, look for a formula based on these two. L. acidophilus resides primarily in the small intestine and produces a number of powerful antimicrobial compounds in the gut, including acidolin, acidolphalin, lactocedin, and bacteriosin. These compounds can inhibit the growth and toxin-producing capabilities of some 23 known disease-causing pathogens, including Campylobacter, Listeria, and Staphylococci, as well as reduce tumor growth and effectively neutralize or inhibit carcinogenic substance. It is also important to note that acidophilus is the primary beneficial bacteria in the vaginal tract. When the presence of acidophilus is compromised, this allows the bad guys such as Godnerella vaginalis or E. coli or chlamydia to take over. Next, many researchers believe that declining levels of bifidobacteria in the large intestine actually mark the eventual onset of chronic degenerative disease. Bifidobacteria benefit the body in a number of ways. They consume old fecal matter have the ability to remove cancer-forming elements or the enzymes which lead to their formation and protect against the formation of liver, colon, and mammary gland tumors. They also crowd out E. coli. Now, along with these two, there are several other strains worth including in your formula. It is critical that a good formula contains some combination of these strains or something comparable. First, L. salivarius helps digest foods for a healthy intestinal tract and makes vital nutrients more assimilable. It also works to eat away encrusted fecal matter throughout the entire colon. It helps repair the intestinal tract by providing needed enzymes and essential nutrients, and it adheres to the intestinal wall, thereby forming a living matrix that helps protect the mucosal lining. l rhamnosus is powerful for immune system support. It can increase the natural killing activity of spleen cells, which may help to prevent tumor formation. It boosts the ability of the body to destroy foreign invaders and other harmful matter by three times normal activity, and has been shown to increase circulating antibody levels by six to eight times. L. plantarum has the ability to eliminate thousands of species of pathogenic bacteria. It also has extremely high adherence potential for epithelial tissue, and seems to favor colonizing the same areas of the intestinal tract that E. coli prefers, in effect, serving to crowd E. coli out of the body. At one time, plantarum was a major part of our diets, found in sourdough bread, sauerkraut, etc., but is now virtually nowhere to be found. And finally, a good probiotic formulation should contain a prebiotic bacteriophage, or fructooligosaccharides, to help promote the growth of beneficial bacteria. For some friendly bacteria, such as bifidus, FOS can increase their effectiveness by a factor of a thousand times or more. The bottom line is that we don't continually supplement to fill an empty probiotic tank in our intestines. We supplement on a regular basis to continually keep our tank topped off so it never runs low. Is that a waste of money? On some days, yes. But if you ever drink chlorinated water or eat meat or dairy products that contain antibiotics or under stress or just get older, then no, it's not a waste of money. In other words, if you're alive, supplementing with a quality probiotic formula is simple inexpensive health insurance policy that makes all the sense in the world to protect yourself against that eventual rainy day.